Hey, my name is Dylan Kreinbrink. Uh, I want to tell you about an alternative to using Lightroom. Uh, this alternative is free, it's open source, it's available for Mac, uh, Linux, for Windows, for all kinds of different systems. It's called Darktable. It's what I've been using for the past five years or so, since I've started doing photography as a hobbyist and sometimes as a paid person. So this uh, video, <laughs> this video is just meant to take you through a little bit of the ins and outs of getting started using Darktable. It's pretty handy. You can edit images on it, obviously. You can also just take it and use it for organization if that's what you want to use. So uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so this is Darktable version 3.2.1. Uh, it looks a lot like Lightroom. I've never actually used Lightroom myself, so I can't say exactly how similar everything is. Uh, but starting out here, we are in the light table area. So this is like where you import pictures, you do your tagging, uh, you can search for tags, you can, you know, just base your basic organization of stuff. So in order to get pictures from your hard drive into Darktable, you come over here to the left where it says import, and this can go open and close. You can do just a few images or one image at a time or you can do a whole folder. Uh, I'll just grab a whole folder here and um, I will just import everything on this is actually imported already so you know you just go through the explorer and find what you want to import and then open. So I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 uh, uh, so the open button is like way up here in the right. If you're using Mac or Windows, open is gonna be down here on your bottom right. And so I also wanna show you the import options here. Uh, import folders recursively. So if I chose to import this walkabout folder, instead of going all the way through to the actual folder of images, and I did import folders recursively, and I selected this, then it would import anything within this folder and then anything within folders within that folder until it got to the end of all of the folders. Ignore JPEG files. Uh, that's good if you're shooting in RAW and JPEG at the same time. So if you want to just like not ha have to deal with storing your JPEGs in Darktable, you just want to do with your RAW photos and that's good to use. That's what I do. I actually shoot um, just RAW, not JPEG at all. And if you want to apply any metadata on imports, um, I don't. I do that later. You can leave this checked or unchecked. I mean, this doesn't matter if this isn't checked. So, uh, so go ahead and hit open there. And so this is just a couple of images uh, that I took just on some random day. Uh, so on view here, you've got some different options for sorting them. Uh, so right now I'm looking at all of the one star images, any image that is equal to or greater than one star. So one star, two star, three star. Uh, and they're sorted by time. So this is the earliest, this is the latest. Uh, I'll just do all. You have some different options Options here. You can do more stars, look at ones that, you, that are only rejected, all the ones except the rejected. Uh, so you can see there's a few more images here. The little red X means that I rejected them. Uh, the red dot and the yellow dot, those are just different Things you can use with the F1 through F5 keys, just different dots of colors. You got red, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Uh, you can assign star ratings by one through five, number keys, and reject again. Uh, so that's kind of the middle part of it. Coming over to the left side here, collect images. Uh, that's where I think in Lightroom it would be like image collections or something like that. Film roll, I'm not super sure what that is. I just like to use folders mostly. And this will show you the folder structure within your hard drive of everything that you've imported. So if you haven't imported it, then it won't show up here. If you have photos imported for more than one drive, it'll start with like, you know, your C drive, your D drive, whatever your drive numbers are. And then you'd have to expand those and go into more detail about what those, to see farther down. I only have images from OneDrive, um, my specific like photography drive imported, so it just jumps right to the highest level of images there. Recently used collections is kind of similar. We'll we collapse that. So anything that you've opened recently, obviously, is gonna show up here where there's a film roll, 
folder. There's also, you can search by what camera you used, uh, what lens you use, aperture, you know, all of these different options. Tags are really useful to search by. Image information, it is what it says it is. Um, it gives you the name of it. If you expand this, you can see more of the name, the full path to where it is. Good to see if, like what lens you use, what aperture you use, stuff like that. What camera you use. I'm a Nikon shooter. I enjoy Nikon. It's pretty cool. Uh, so that's the left side. That's the middle side. The middle side. Uh, so come over to the right side. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So select, I mean, you can select all the images, none of the, whatever images you had selected, just reverse it. I don't really use this at all. Um, I'll select images and do stuff with those images. So like when I want to delete all of my rejected images, I'll do rejected only. I'll uh, select all of them and then hit trash. And then I'll just go to trash. So then you have to go back you know, to all or whatever to see what's left. Uh, there's trash. If you want to get rid of an image just from your dark, dark table library, but not like delete it off your hard drive, then that's where you would do remove instead of trash. You can move uh, images other places. I would do that within your hard drive itself, you know, File Explorer on Windows or Finder on Mac. Create HDR. I would not recommend using Darktable for HDR. It just doesn't do a great job in my opinion with HDR. Uh, history stack. This is where you can like copy all of the edits that you did and then paste them onto another image. You can get rid of all the edits you did. Um, if you did duplicates of things, you can compress the history so it's more simplified. And mode is how you can either overwrite or append your edits. So if I like adjusted exposure, then contrast, then you know color uh, color zones on here, one of the different things. I could copy that and then append, would just put that at the top of the, the edits I did, that I did on the next image, whatever I select next. Or if I do overwrite, it'll erase the edits that I did on this computer and then add the edits I did on the whatever image I copied it from. Styles, uh, this is presets in Lightroom. Uh, you can organize them in different ways, you know, just like, having folders of styles, essentially. Uh, there's styles online you can get at dstyles.net, I think. You can look at ones there. I don't use any of those personally. Metadata is what it says it is. Uh, tagging, you know, you can attach cat, you know, to an image. And then it shows up there. Geotagging, um, I've never used this before, but if you know, if you're keeping track with a GPS, a GPS and then take the GPX file, you know, you can do it there. Then obviously export. Um, I just do JPEG 8-bit most of the time, uh, unless I'm doing something specific, like I might do a TIFF file if I'm gonna edit this in an outside editor. Uh, otherwise I just do stick with normal JPEG at 95. Uh, you got different options here, uh, like the max size and pixels that you want it to be if you wanna do like, um, you know, web size images you know, you can do 1600 or whatever you want to do, whatever size. If it's zero, if both of them are zero, it'll just stay, you know, whatever the original size is resolution wise. Uh, upscaling. So if you have, you know, a smaller folder, that a smaller photo, that's like 1600 on a side, but you're trying to blow it up to like 2000 on a side, then you want to allow upscaling. I, you know, keep that at no. Most of these I keep at, you know, no here, profile, sRGB for, uh, so it looks right on the web. I don't do anything with this kind of thing. I don't really know what it is. Style, like you can add a style as you export. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't know why that they have that option there. I don't think that's smart. Because you want to like see your edits before you export, right? So why would I want to apply a style as I export. That doesn't make sense to me. I've never actually clicked that gear icon before, so. Okay, so you can just choose what kind of metadata goes out with it. And then export, exports it. Uh, you choose where you want to export it with this little folder icon up here. <laughs> Probably should have said that first. You know, you can navigate through all of your stuff. I only ever export to file on disk. And then if I want to do something different with it later, that's when I'll do that. 
Okay, so that's kind of just the grand tour through the light table portion of Dark Table, the image editor. Uh, this might be something that if you're paying for Lightroom but you're just a hobbyist and you're not really making money from your photography, that might be a good option for you. Uh, I found it to be very really reliable and useful. Uh, in another video, I'll go through the Darkroom tab of Darktable. That's where you actually do the image editing. Uh, I'll show you my most commonly used, uh, uh, they're called modules in Darktable um, in Lightroom. I don't know what they're called. They're just like the sections of different stuff you can do, like white balance exposure, contrast, that kind of thing. And uh, there's a lot of different things you can do in Darktable. Uh, so I'll show you that in another video. Thanks.